AFA Today from New York. Uh, earlier today, former Democratic presidential candidate Howard Dean said this. Um, Governor Dean, uh, President Obama, very contrite. I'm going to keep it very short because I want these guys to jump in. I talk forever about health care. Um, I, I, a, I wonder if he has the legal authority to do this since this was a congressional bill that set this up. And B, I stick to what I said before the president came on, which is if you want to make this work, you got to get people in the system and the website's not going to work evidently for a while. So there you go. You, you know, you know, Mr. Dean, he, he like came in second in a primary and went, yeah, that guy, <laughs> he's asking on MSNBC this morning, does the president have the uh, legal authority to do this? I'm not sure that he does. Dr. Dean may not uh, know a lot, but he got that part right. Uh, 888-589-8840. And uh, the president announcing today, <laughs> announcing changes to the law. Um, I didn't know he could do that. I honestly, I, I've not ever read that in any civics textbook, I've, my government textbook. I went back, I was reviewing. I can't find where the president has the, has the authority to just go, eh, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, we'll just change, change that there, scratch that out. Yeah, we'll just put this in there instead. I don't think it works that way. Uh, let's go to uh, the phones. Melvin is calling from Arkansas. Hi, hey, Melvin, welcome. You're on AFA Today with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're with us. Hey, Kevin. Um, I just wanted to talk about this from a little bit of a different angle. Um, okay. I don't think that uh, he's changing the law or trying to. I actually think it's already... Uh, in the law, and the reason I say that is because um, I carry insurance on myself privately, and I received a letter about two months ago that that stated, uh, due to the ACA, uh, Affordable Care Act, that I would be losing my insurance um, effective December 31st of 2013. Right. However, however, though, then it went on to state that, but the Arkansas Insurance Commission would allow me, they extended me uh, the opportunity to keep my policy if I chose until December 31st, 2014. So when I listened to the president this morning and I was hearing him say those things, I started to get aggravated. And then he said, uh, just like you had mentioned, he said uh, for, for a period of one year we would extend it. But ultimately it's up to your state. He, he finished it with that, if, you all, you know, if everybody caught that part. I know one um, station I was listening to, Eric, they didn't get that last piece in there. But um, but anyway, I, I don't think that he's changing. I think it's already there. I think it's, uh, it was already there hidden in all of those pages. Um, but I think what he's achieving uh, and getting out of this is for the um, higher information people, who, um, like all of us, um, it's an agitation. And for the lower um I guess you'd say the uh, less educated and knowledgeable about the people that just don't pay attention. Let's we'll just put right. it that way. He, he, he's, he's looking like a savior again, and it's going to boost his ratings. But I have, like I said, I got that letter. I have it at home, and it plainly states that I was already going to be allowed for a period of one year to keep my insurance. But ultimately, in the end of 2014, I will lose my my insurance. Well, what's interesting about that, Melvin, and thank you for the clarifications on uh, at least uh, how it affects uh, the state of Arkansas. Uh, what's interesting about that is now you have, if you, if you follow the, the argument that has been made in the past about the Commerce Clause, and the Commerce Clause actually came into the Supreme Court arguments about the health care law, saying that uh, uh, in order for justice to be carried out, you know, state to state, then this had to be allowed and so forth and so on. Commerce allows, uh, the Commerce Clause in the Constitution allows a lot of people to make arguments about fairness in different states uh, when they're trying to really, what they're trying to really do is, is uh, exercise a will uh, that all states conform with certain things. But what's interesting about that is that if the president said it that way this morning and then this all turns out to be true, then now he's making the state's rights argument. And one of the things that he's been saying from the beginning is that these states that didn't set up the exchanges and aren't participating in the Medicaid program and so forth, uh, that they're these rogue, you know, uh, terrible uh, people that, uh, you know, are trying to hurt their people and so forth. Uh, look, if you're in a state that, uh, God bless you, avoided the mess 
and and wasn't and you're not required to lose your policy. And those may be in some of the places where some of the people are actually getting to keep their policies without interruption that they liked. Uh, then you, you're going to be you're going to be better off anyway. But you, that's because you've got strong leadership at the state level. But the the, the very bottom line here is that this is. This was proven to be, quote, a constitutional law, right? Thank you, John Roberts. He said, no, it, it, it passes constitutional muster, which a lot of us scratching our head at going, I don't know, has, since when can the federal government force you to buy something that you've never been forced to buy? I mean, this is like crazy. Uh, but he saw that. Well, what about the, what about the, the, dual, uh, the dual nature of how people are now treated under this law? Some people have to follow a mandate, buy new policies, because geog- uh, geographically they live in areas where uh, this constitutional law is allowed to be treated differently by a state that oversees the carrying it out than someone who lives in a different state? See, for every one of them that write me <laughs> and send me letters on a daily basis saying, Kevin, the problem is you guys. The problem is the insurance company. The problem is you people that oppose this law. If you had just given it a chance to work, it would be a different place. See, the problem with all of that that keeps coming at me every day is that you don't know what you're talking about. This convoluted mess of a law is trying to do something, and let me just cut all kidding aside. The Affordable Care Act is trying to accomplish something that the government wholesale has no business doing. The government being the delivery of services or goods to the American people is always the least efficient, most wasteful, and least accountable way of getting those services to the American people. Think about the difference in when you take a a letter and you put a stamp on it and you take it to the post office and how long it takes to get somewhere as opposed to when you take it to UPS uh, or one of these other places. See, they're more efficient. They have a better system. The, the, the bulk of the, of the federal system, and it's gotten a little bit better because these uh, competitive enterprises have actually put some competition in play. But, but, but consider the lack of efficiency in where you go to get your driver's license on a daily basis and the lines you stand in and the triplicate of forms that you fill out and the insane uh, hoops that you have to jump through just to get your driver's license or your license plate renewed. See, the problem is we're turning our health care and everything that goes into it, the care of our loved ones and the uh, sensitive issues d- d- concerning disease and treatment for that disease and what doctors think and, and, and so forth. We're turning all of that into now a public entity where publicly, first of all, we don't have the money to fund it. And so within a matter of years, uh, it, it, the, the funding for it will be vastly out of, uh, I mean, it will go out of money quick, especially if they don't get more people to sign up. Because the, the whole theory of how this is supposed to work is that you have everybody in America on the system. Uh, all the young all the young people, all the uh, prime wage earners right now, everybody that's uh, still pre-retirement, et cetera, everybody's in the system. And so the younger people are paying for the older people that are in the system. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, A weird thing. It's kind of a shell game. It's kind of a Bernie Madoff thing. We sent Bernie Madoff to jail. Far less fraud involved in what Bernie Madoff was doing than what the ACA has done, the Affordable uh, Care Act. Everything we've been told about this has been patently untrue. We were told that it was going to bring an average savings of $2,500 to the average American family. What's been the reality? It's about $2,700 more per family. That's that's a swing of $5,000 difference. For the average family, can your family afford a five thousand dollar chunk of of uh, money going out that they weren't expecting uh, to 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 hang on to this year? I don't know. Maybe they can. If you can, God bless you. I know a lot of people that can't. Uh, we were told that it would be more efficient. Has anything about the rollout been efficient at all? We were told it was going to be high tech, and and you know what's amazing. The president, when he wanted to motivate young voters, he got high tech experts into his office and they figured out how to do high tech campaigns to get voter awareness and messaging out. There was a lot of high tech experts in that. How, how can how can this be like such a third grade website? That it that it crashes on one six people enrolled on the first day. My point, friend, is simply this. There has been nothing about this law. 
that has worked the way it's supposed to. It has more pages of regulation, about a million pages of regulation have been written to govern the 2,000 pages of the actual law. What our last caller said may entirely be true. There may be all kinds of escape hatches in here that the, that's already in the law. But I, I, don't, I don't know that the president has the uh, uh, ability, and I don't know that it's in the law or not in the law that he can come out and just announce, you know, maybe there was a, a clause on page, uh, you know, 2009, where on page 2009 in the third paragraph it said, and if anything goes uh, sideways, President Obama has the power to come out and change the law surreptitiously. Maybe that's in there. I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't see it in there. I have, I've not seen any commentators that, that know of it being in there. We're getting, we're getting what we voted in, friends. That, that's what, that's, and that's the bottom line. We're getting what we asked for. And you should be careful. Because that uh, old saying is true. Be careful what you ask for. Uh, Jack in Florida. Uh, welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough on AFA Today. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hi, this is Jack in Florida. Uh, I'm, God bless you for what you're talking about today. Thank you. Everyone who takes office, a federal office, has to make an oath of allegiance and it swears to uphold the Constitution. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they're in violation. The Bill of Rights was the first ten amendments. Mm -hmm. Those first ten cover everything. We don't need any others, really, if it comes down to it. And our civil rights did not come from our government. They came from God, our Creator. Yep. Yep. And as long as people keep that in mind and hold people's feet to the fire on the oath of office, ah, the guy who said, time to get him out of there, I think he's right. They can be impeached i think yeah and and in terms of uh the practicality of that uh jack i don't i just don't see the will i i, I see the the votes could be there if you took impeachment to the house but the process according to the constitution has to go through the senate and currently you don't have a majority you don't even have a simple majority that would be able to convict the president in the senate um much less the super majority that is needed uh so we can talk about impeachment and we can we can have that philosophical discussion and does this rise to the level of that and you know some people want to have coffee and sit around and talk about that every morning there's just practically no way that that's going to be carried out because the votes aren't there uh and i don't know that the votes would ever be there as long as uh the president has one of the one of the houses in his uh, in his majority control let's go to chad in ohio hi chad you're on with kevin mccullough on afa today yeah, Kevin, you brought up a good point there, uh, what they have to go through the Senate. The only yeah. way to basically get these politicians out is to vote them out when voting time comes. Yep. But, but, the uh, downside to that, Chad, is you, you require them to pay attention for a long period of time. Well, America has no attention span. It well, that's and that's and that's what I'm saying. We it, it, it causes um yes. Yes, we should. We should. Uh, uh there should be changes. When, when we don't like the job that our employees are doing, we should let our employees go. That's what we do. That's what business owners do. I've had to do that. It's not a pleasant thing. You, you did not like, you know, skipping for joy. I'm sorry. You know, it didn't work out. But, you know, you're not doing your job. We'll see. Ultimately, friends, God is the one that's in control. And uh, we can't expect a better country unless we are pursuing him. And so in our daily pursuit to obliterate confusion, pursue truth, we've got to make sure that he's at the core of that. And we've got to be different people. We've got to be people that uh, hold high the standard of what truth is. I'm Kevin McCullough, and I'm so pleased that I get to spend this time with you each day. So honored to be at this microphone at this hour. And I hope that you'll come back next time here for AFA Today on AFR Talk. <laughs>